everyone, Bethany Wilson here with my pal. It's my pal, <laughs> Dusty. So we're here at the park playing some fetch and I wanted to do a rant with love. Uh, we were recently on a really long trip, two weeks, and uh, Dusty stayed at my folks farm in Illinois where my 18 year old brother still lives and boy, they were two peas in a pod. They took care of each other and uh, they, they were inseparable and he completely took care of Dusty the whole time I was there. Now, I am very appreciative of that. Don't get me wrong, incredibly appreciative of that. But it gave me a great idea for a rant. And you have to excuse me, I'm also playing fetch <laughs> with him. And I'll show you a clip of that at the end because we're working on a specific uh, thing with the e-collar with him. He has a bad habit we're working on. So I'll show that at the end just for a little training tip. But my rant is about how, how amazing it is that the same dog can be a totally different dog with another handler or in another home. Now, here's the thing. I could use tons of examples of this with uh, <laughs> with clients' dogs. I mean, I could use a million, but I, I don't really want to do that. Um, not right now, anyways. So, something recently came up where I can use an example with Dusty. Now, um, my family won't mind. My brother won't mind. He can take it. And he knows I talked to him about it, but uh, <laughs> Dusty is a needier dog. He's a confident dog, but he's he can be really needy. He can be a little whiny. Um, so so we knew that when we first got him and started you know leaving him and getting him used to being left. We made our comings and goings really low key. Didn't make a big deal about it. Didn't greet him. So he learned that it was no big deal and just to be nice and settled. And it was still you know he. Probably for oh, about two weeks, there was a little whining, but that was it. We had cameras on him. It really wasn't that bad. That's it. And I've had him for maybe eight, nine months now. <laughs> so he spends two weeks with my brother. And I told my brother, he's a needier dog. When you come in the house, don't make a big deal. Don't get him all riled up because they have other dogs. And I didn't want him, you know, riling them up as well. Do brothers ever listen to sisters? No. Even when it's my own dog? No. And I will give them credit. We recently lost our family dog, uh, or not credit, but a little leeway. We recently lost our family dog, um, a golden retriever. So it was very recent. So I know there was a little bit of that going on with him there too, but still, he spoiled Dusty Rotten. And, uh, and this is why that's bad for at least Dusty's temperament is within a week, he started jumping, jumping at the door, whining and barking like a, like a bark whine. That is not good for Dusty's state of mind. It's not good for his independence. It's just not, it's not good in general. You don't want your dog in that frame of mind. Um, so anyway, they told me that this was happening, but I was like, it's no big deal. I'll deal with it when I get home. We'll, he'll adjust back, you know, and we'll work on it a little bit. <laughs> so, so when I do get there, when I get back to Illinois, cause my, cause Tommy and I, we drove, he drove with me, which was really amazing. He drove with me back to Los Angeles with Dusty and my other dog. Um, so I got to see it firsthand. Dusty would literally lay by the door, even though I was there, people were there. It didn't matter. He would lay by the door, uh, and when when he would leave, he would jump and bark and do a little howl. <sighs> so he was really anxious. Okay, he he really genuinely was anxious. So Tommy is off. He's out of school. What if Tommy wasn't out of school, and instead of only being gone an hour, two hours at a time, you know, just down the road helping Grandma, what if he was gone for eight hours? That would develop into some serious issues. And even when, uh, I mean, when Tommy would come through the door, it would be like, oh, hey, buddy, and he'd get all excited. And it is cute. I mean, it's so cute, but it's not, it's not good. It's, it's, it's not good for his type of temperament. It causes anxiety, which leads to separation anxiety, which leads to other serious issues. So that snowballed into something else. He's like, please throw the ball. All right, I have to hang on. I have to throw the ball for Dusty. Down. Go ball, will we? I'll just show it real quick. 
I'm gonna throw with my left hand, so uh, don't laugh at me. There we go. <laughs> so a really interesting way that this transferred um, into something else is when he came out to Los Angeles. We went to the dog beach down in Huntington Beach and Tommy was kind of playing with Dusty and Dusty wouldn't interact with uh, any of the dogs. It was really weird every time we've taken him, unless there's a ball <laughs> to get his attention. He's very social. He stays away from the water because he's a big baby, but he's very social. So I was like, that's weird. And uh, finally I told, I think I kind of figured it out or thought I knew. And I told Tommy, stop, don't say his name, stop petting him, stop messing with him. And he did. And then the next time we came again and Dusty was like a different dog. I was like, don't pet him when he gets out of the car, have nothing to do with him. Let him just do it, do his thing. And he was so much more confident and so, and going out and, and just getting into things and greeting dogs and just having more fun. Okay. So when it, everything transfers over, right? So, so it's really important that, uh, that you guys out there understand all these little things at home, they matter. They, they matter in such a big way. So, uh, so yeah, so there's my little tidbit there's my my rant for the day because um, he doesn't do any of that with any of us so it was really incredible for me to see not just with someone's dog that I'm paid to work with but with my own dog to see how different he was with a different person and it's not like it's not like uh, uh, Tommy doesn't have any any skills as far as training goes he trained his own uh, his own dog he did some shows I um, mean he has great timing he has great intuition he helped me with a, a um, an actual human aggressive dog while he was here named Henry so it's <laughs> That's not it at all. It's all about how he interacted with Dusty when he left, when he came home. So there's my uh, little tidbit for the day. It matters. It absolutely matters. I can take a dog out of the shelter, put him in one home. He, he'll get territorial, protective, behavioral issues, put him in another home, and none of those things will pop up. Uh, maybe like a little tiny bit, but nothing to worry about. Because the dog's instinct is still there. Dusty's still a needier dog, but I know that about him, so I try not to nurture that part of him. So, all right guys, there's my two cents. Make sure you uh, watch after this clip, because I've got a great little training clip for those of you out there doing e-collar training. Um, it's uh, just a really fun clip of him playing fetch and me getting him to bring it to me rather than six foot from me. <laughs> All right guys, have a good one. Bring it here. Come on. Come on. Let's go, bring it here. Come on. All right, so he thinks he is close enough. And he's looking at some other dogs that have uh, marked their territory. And there's a bird flying around annoying him. But anyway, this is just the mentality of a Border Collie and of many other breeds out there. So I just wanted to show, especially because I'm sitting down. <laughs> But I just wanted to show, um, I am really trying to get him, good job to bring it all the way to me. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Nope. Good boy. Come. Good job, buddy. Come on. Yeah. So I'm at a really low level. I'm at a five where he can barely feel it. And I'm just encouraging him to come to me because verbal is just not enough. Come on. He does so good with uh, like just an, an efficient, clean way of communicating. It's just so good for his mindset. But he's a border collie. Come on, let's go. Come on, bring it here. Good boy. Good, thank you. Much better. So I hope you guys understand what I'm doing here. This is just a little clip about him. He's great at, uh, at bringing it to me. He has such a bad habit of bringing it six foot from me, and I'm just tired of it, so I'm fixing it, dang it. <laughs> and um, I've worked, I happened to work with a couple board collies recently. Man, they all did the same freaking thing. It's so funny, and I love seeing all the breed characteristics bleed over. Good job, bud, all the way. Way to go. Way to go, bud. Bring it here. Come on. Come on. 
a little closer. He's like, I don't understand. I'm right here. So that's why he sat. <laughs> come on, come. Good boy. That was pitiful, but that's all I needed. Good job, buddy. So every time I'm saying, come, come on, I'm just, I'm tapping this or I'm doing like a quick double tap and I'm not holding down the button um, because that tends to be more of a, like a settling thing or getting a dog into position thing. I'm giving like quick taps to kind of get his rear in gear, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm doing. If your dogs are e-collar trained and you've been working on um, come or uh, you've been working on what I'm working on, um, this is like just a great little way to, uh, to, to get them to uh, understand it, to bring it closer to you if you're having that problem. To give you an example with a leash, um, for instance, like prong collar training, when I was doing group classes, sometimes the dog, oh, hello. Well, hi, how are you? I just love impromptu hellos. Sometimes the dogs, uh, they get kind of just a little overwhelmed and they'll just stop moving. Well, you don't do a big correction and you can do pressure, you can, but sometimes it just doesn't transfer well. So what we'll do instead is quick pops. Quick pops to get them moving. Not like big corrections to take the wind out of their sails, but just really quick, fast, uh, like a couple, two, three in a row to just kind of get the rear in gear. And then we tell them how wonderful and amazing they are. So it's kind of something to just snap them out of it. So I'm kind of just doing the same thing with the e-collar. So just thought that was a neat little, you know, just like a little tidbit that I've been working on with Dusty um, that I wanted to let you guys know. Oh, all the way, well, gosh, she always <laughs> does that. He is so cute. No, I did not teach him the nose nudging thing. That is just part of the beauty. That is Dusty. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bye guys, have a good one.